Welcome back, everybody. So picture this. It's a beautiful long weekend. What do you make inside that barbecue? Well, not a lot grilling right here. So time to say hello to one Randy Feltis. I'm holding up an aloe vera plant and I'm punned out, my friend. I got nothing else. How are you, Randy? Chef Randy is here. <laughs> Dina, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. You know what? That looks so inviting. I need to put some stuff in our grill here. We've got our IKEA grill over here, my friend. And tis the season. You're serving up three delicious recipes, including a mocktail. Let's get started. Three delicious recipes. I am doing a muscle flex on my Windsor salt <laughs> and all the knowledge behind salt. This is a chef's dream because everybody in the cooks understands how important salt is. It goes into every ingredient. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna start off with a mocktail, a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of water, some tree sauce, and guess what, Dina? An egg tree white. Sauce? This is gonna uh -huh. get super interesting now. Tree, like sauce. tree sauce, you know, like the maple syrup. Yes. Basically, <laughs> any cocktail, we gotta do the, the kind of cut between acidity and sweet. And then the egg white's gonna kind of give us this creaminess. But the last thing we're missing, Dina, the yeah. last thing we're missing, is the salt. So there's different types of salt out there. I'm gonna go with a garnishing salt. This is a Himalayan coarse salt, and you just rim Yum. the glass like this. And I like to rim about three quarters of the glass. So you have a choice. You can actually Ooh. go right into it, because you're not afraid of it, or you can kind of softly go in. Nice touch. Now pour this out, and These you're gonna see those yes. egg whites just kind of, look at that, foam up, wow. and then give us a garnish with the mint. Love a nice fancy right? mocktail, that looks you know? nice. Beautiful. Next, being Italian, you know, you I know wanna, what a panzanella you, you is. Well, you do, do you? Yeah. So you want to take over the segment from here? Well, it might happen <laughs> to be a delicious salad with some old stale bread, well, well, typically, and some tomatoes. Congratulations, I got it right here. I don't know if your garden looks like mine, Dina, but the Ontario tomatoes are coming in, the heirlooms, so I've got all kinds of different varieties here, the yellows, the reds, and everything else. But my zucchinis are coming up, and I don't know about you, but those zucchinis, you check on them one day, they're this size, you come back the next day, and they're like this big. Randy, what's so in your garden? You did not, did you size, harvest those tomatoes already? Wow, they look beautiful. The tomatoes, the tomatoes, no, I got I lied there. The tomatoes came in from a supplier, but they are Canadian, ah. and the zucchinis came out of my garden. Okay, fair. I'm not, I bet you Frankie's got tomatoes, because he's always on top of stuff. <laughs> but then what we're gonna do is, well, we're gonna season everything before it hits the grill just lightly with a fine salt, and then kind of top it off with the stale bread. You know how this goes. So good. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil, mm. right? And it's Drizzle hearty. It is hearty and, and delicious. We're going. Totally. Well, what makes it more hearty is we're going to finish it with a little bit of the finishing salt, the lighter one, because the veggies need the lighter one. They don't want the crunch. And just kind of get that up there and understand when you're seasoning with salt, the higher you go, the better off it is because it spreads out. I love the variety of now, salts Dina, because I'm, I'm telling you, I went to this one restaurant once. They had as many choices for olive oil as they did salt. So they brought you a, a bread basket. And then you could just like experiment away, different salts, different oils. It, it's incredible to see the different salts and, and the different effects they have on the foods and the coarse versus the fine. For sure, the milder versus the stronger. Um, and you know, it, it's kind of versatile. I've been putting it in my coffee in the morning. That's a oh. nice little tip. It also takes away some of the odors. I clean my cutting boards with it so it gets the garlic out of there, the oh. fish out of there, and my cast iron pans. As well, I don't know if you know this, Dina, it will also remove red wine stains. I don't know if you have any of those. Oh, okay, hold on. How much do you put inside your coffee? This is intriguing, because I do like a sea salted chocolate. But tell me, about like, how much do you put inside do you your know coffee? How much? I'm gonna show you. I'm just gonna put it on top of this cocktail, like that much. A little. Just a little pinch, and it just boosts it. It's all of a sudden, oh, I taste the chicory, I taste the rest, it's gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna try that. And last but not least, fish. People are sick and tired of cooking it the same way. This is all about presentation. They are, and they don't like the odor of the fish, so the salt crust, I've got some egg whites here, and then three cups of salt, and you can use the Himalayan, the coarse, the fine, the everything, and we whisk this up. Are you ready for this, Dina? Oh, yeah. And this looks intimidating, I can understand. People are like, oh, it's gonna be salty, it's gonna be salty. I made this last night, and it cooked the fish so perfectly that I actually, it was so delicious, it, it still needed salt on the inside. Exactly. So we put this down here. It doesn't actually penetrate inside, it just right? creates this beautiful cocoon for it to make it super moist. Cocoon, thank a you cocoon. very much. A salt cocoon. We put it down like that. 
So, well, that's what we're doing here, the salt cocoons. We're gonna build, bury our snapper, right? Yeah. In this beautiful salt cocoon. And what it's gonna do as well, is gonna lock everything in and just make it moist, but don't be intimidated by the salt. That's why there's different salts out there. Yes, the table salt is very strong, but the Himalayan isn't so bad. It's kind of mild and delicious. And then I use the kosher as well. And the sea salt, this is a lot of the sea salt. You're gonna think that that's coming off salty. We're gonna bake that at 400 degrees yeah. for 38 minutes. 38 minutes. Boop, 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 boop. This, is the, this is when you look Are super you gourmet. And you're like, Chef Randy taught me how to do this on BT Canada. Boom, look at that. Moist look and succulent and delicious. Dribble, a little bit of olive oil drizzle inside, you know parsley. If I ever go, I want to be baked in salt. <laughs> let's this not, is the way let's to not talk it about that, my friend. Cheese. But that looks beautiful. We need you here because we need all your delicious <laughs> recipes. Okay? That looks breakfast is served. I'm not oh, judging. Okay? For more information, friends, gosh. that was. We're I'm, having this for breakfast. You've taught me many things. I'm trying a sprinkle of salt in my coffee, and I think I'm actually going to attempt that at home. It's not just for the the restaurants. You could do it at home. For more amazing recipes, including how to make videos and a complete list of household hints, just head to windsorsalt.com. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Cheers to that with your mocktail. Thanks, Randy. Right now we're throwing things downstairs to Devo.